Evelyn, would you give us your name, your date of birth, and where you were born, and then tell us something about your family? Uh, my name is Evelyn Cornelius, but my maiden name is Evelyn Paulus. And uh, I was born here in Oneida, but then it uh, seems like my mother and dad wanted to, uh, us to be brought up. I guess they figured that's the way to go in the, with the white... You know, when the, so I started in first grade, they didn't have kindergartens then. So I started in first grade in a public school and finished high school in the public school where, where, in where Appleton. Appleton. What was your mother and father's name? My mother was Libby Paulus, Archiquette, Libby Archiquette Paulus. My dad was Alfred Paulus. Did you have a middle initial that you remember? No, I I don't. What about your grandparents? Do you remember anything of your grandparents? No, they were already gone by the time I started growing up. Where was the, where we was the used homestead? to go a lot a lot to uh, Godick's place, Godick Paulus, Percy's grandfather. Is that located at the same place? Uh, right near the the depot where the depot was. Okay. When we used to come in. It would drive in. Well, I used to look at that and spell one Ida, and that's how I learned to spell one Ida. Now, you say that uh, your, your your parents uh, moved away from Oneida. Uh, is that did they move to Appleton? Is that where? No, they moved to Green Bay first, and I went to tank school there in the first grade. And uh, where Edwin Baird's place was, that old place, that's where I was born. Okay, where's that? Where's that located at? That's by on that Freedom Freedom Road. I don't know the roads too good. Is it up by the uh, uh, health center? No, it's halfway in between. There, uh, by the Episcopal Church and in uh, Methodist Church. Okay, right. and it was. Uh, And uh, there was two-story building at that time. I still can remember it. And I remember when we moved to Green Bay because it was raining, and, and I can remember it stooped over like this, and they had something covered me over there when we were moving to Green Bay. And I remember when my mother got a phone in, don't touch that. Of course, I was one of them like tomboys. I was always... And I lifted it up, and this one said, number, pl uh, number please. And I got scared because, the, the, you know, somebody talked to me and I, at that time. And uh, she, my mother, I used to, uh, at that time they had those prints, little prints, and you dab them in, and then you make marks with them. And I wanted a, something, one of those. And my mother wouldn't get it. and <laughs> So I always kept on saying, I forgot his name now. His name was Arthur something. And he said, well, Arthur's got some. Arthur's got some. Finally, my mother got him. He got tired of me hollering about Arthur. How many were in your family, your brothers and sisters? I think there was eight of us. But I don't know what they had in mind, my mother and father. Because, uh, I had two brothers and two older sisters that went away to school. And then from and then, about seven years later, my mother had me and my three brothers, and then we all went to public school. The young, us, the younger ones. Where did your parents go to school? Do you remember? My mother went to Carlisle, and my dad went to Hampton, Virginia. Now you you're telling me about uh, going to tank school in Green Bay. Yeah, I went there about to almost second, third grade. And uh, my dad used to play in the band, and uh, so he always made sure it seemed like he had a car to go. And uh, he used to have one of those big touring cars with the seats in the middle. And us kid, me and my three brothers would fight over those seats, and my mother get in the car, said, put the seats down, you all four sit right in the back. And that was it. <laughs> we couldn't sit in the seats. 
So you, your dad was a musician? Yeah, he was the Oneida or the band. What instrument did he play? He played a tuba. And uh, in Appleton, he was in the 120th Artillery Band. And I hear that they're all gone now. And I still can see that Professor Mum there when he uh, led the, the parade there in Appleton. He'd sit there on that horse. And he had a white one of those beards, you know, those like a goatee beard. And he really looked impressive sitting on there with it. And then my dad belonged to the Elks uh, Club there. And, and he belonged to the uh, Oshkosh Symphony Orchestra. He did. And I don't know, Rosenberg was the head of the paper mills over there. And he let my dad go to the 120th Artillery, would go to Camp McCoy for two weeks. And he always went over there. And then when the Elks uh, had a convention in California, he let him go there. So he, uh, then they practice, and he, he was always seemed to be going all the time. And we always had to go, be over there to see the parade. And, and like now, I hear these little kids. It's so boring. It's so boring. Now, I never had a. It never was boring because we always went here and there, and he always took us and everything. And now I hear it's so different. Can you uh, tell me a little bit more about the Oneida Band? Was there any of the uh, other band members that you remember? Um, well, they had an orchestra when we, we lived in Manitowoc there. And my dad, they belonged to that aluminum company. And there was Laban Baird. There was uh, Riley Hill. There was Marshall Hill. And uh, um, uh, Simeon Adams. And they used to ha have an orchestra, and they practiced at our house because uh, we, we had the piano, and my sister used to play the piano, and my brother played the drums. And I was in sixth grade at that time, and my mother used to have those big folding doors, and I used to look in there at a Riley Hill. <laughs> in sixth grade, I, was, I had a crush on Riley Hill at that time. And uh, they used to play different places in the well, my dad worked at the paper mills there in Appleton. And um, my mother worked in the Conway Hotel in Appleton. Oh, the Conway Hotel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember that because then I always had to come home from school and peel potatoes. And uh, if the grocery boy bought the groceries over, then I'd have to take the butter and the pound of butter and the holy margarine and those little little beads and put them in a crock and then they put them on top of the there's a shelf over the stove and then the heat warms it up and then you were supposed to do it and later on after supper then we spo I'm supposed to mix all that together for our brother was there um other Oneidas living in? Uh... There was uh, Evelyn Hill's family lived in Little Shoot, and we used to go visit over there. And Mackenzie Skendor family lived in uh, Nina Menasha, and we used to visit over there. Did your uh, folks speak Oneida? They did when they didn't want us to know something. And when they would talk about Christmas, they didn't want us to know. But otherwise, and then when company came over, they talked. But they never talked to us in Oneida. Then did they teach you the language then? No. Do you, do you have an idea why they might not have taught you? I figured because they were, well, way afterwards I was thinking about it. And uh, they were, my mother was there when she was seven at Carl. And my dad's mother had died and he was there when he was around seven. And they both stayed there until they were, Graduated until they were 18 around. They both came back. And uh, I guess they figured that was the way to go. So that's why they decided to take us younger ones and, and go to public school. And the other ones had gone away to school, Toma and, and uh, Flandreau. Do you remember your parents practicing anything uh, like uh, a weaving or... Um, 
Well, my mother was good at, at uh, crocheting, and she did all of those, and tatting and everything, and she tried to teach me, and I hated it. I, I, to this day, I, I hate it. And yet she just, one word I can remember, uh, I don't say it right, but she used to say, that's not only they were stuck. I just wasn't good for nothing. That was what it was. And I never could. She tried to, try to make me, but there was, she was just, <laughs> and she'd have her lace, when she was through with something, she'd get her lace out. She had them in the uh, flour sack, you know, all washed out, and she'd put her lace in there and roll it up and put it someplace. And then when she wasn't doing anything, she'd take it out and crochet and whatever she did. Well, besides I'm, working out, then she must have done a lot of uh, work at the home too. Yeah, I know, and, and she always made sure we had apples. We always had. She'd buy, uh, do the ap apple picking for what they wanted, and then she'd pick for herself. And then uh, uh, we'd have apples there. And one time we, I'll tell you the story. One time, and my mother always said, "When you're coming down from the upstairs, you bring your linens down because Monday I wash." Well, we didn't bring them down, and she went up to get them. And when we got home, I we always go down the basement and open the, get it, and hear this screen door into this room was locked. I said, how come it's locked? She says, well, you did yourselves in. I went up to get your linens. There was all kinds of apple cores under the pillow, and that was it. So for about a week or two weeks, we couldn't have no apples because we was, you know, more than we should have. Mm -hmm. Was there any other crafts or uh, like basket making or? or no, anything? she didn't seem to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I know when we went by Evelyn, it seems like Evelyn's grandmother was used to make those crafts. What kind of crafts would do you remember them making? A sort of a basket and they would do those uh, uh, beading like with the things across those cigar boxes. My mother never showed us that, but when we used to go by Evelyn's, they used to have that. She used to do that. She had a grandma over there, and then and I guess it would show her stuff. What would be a typical Sunday in your home? Well, we have to had to go to Sunday school. We went to the Episcopal Church right there in College Avenue right across from the campus of the Lawrence College. And um, then we get, uh, my dad would come by for us, and if my mother didn't have dinner ready, well, we'd go for a little ride. And, that, and that's when I learned to drive the car. I was about 14 then. Oh, 14. Let me drive. And uh, so, we will, or we went, uh, we went, he used to go out and visit our Uncle Richard. And uh, he lived near Seymour, near Pine Castles, where he lived. And my mother would make a whole bunch of pies and cakes and bread and take it along with us over there, because he was a bachelor. And, uh, well, when you were 14 and learning to drive, there, it must have been a lot different than it was nowadays. Oh, it was. Was it easier to drive then, or was the roads pretty rough? Well, my dad had an Essex at that time, and he's take it slow now when you give it the gas. And I just went like this, and my dad flew back, and <laughs> so I it couldn't drive for a while. Kind of like the apples, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and we went up that one time to Cherry Orchard. My mother took us over there. Me and my three brothers and I, and <laughs> I went down with this bus over there to Sturgeon Bay and got what my mother wanted and got what this girl's mother wanted. We come back and we, I went over there with her and here her mother gave her her cigarette and she gave me one and I took it. And we were in the toilet over there, <laughs> outside toilet. And we we're smoking in our my, my Evelyn! I drew my cigarette behind the door, and that girl just sat there and spoke. <laughs> Wait till you get home. Wait till your dad. Wait till your dad hears this. <laughs> and then when we did get home, 
My dad just took his old time eating. Everybody else left the table but me and him sitting there. <laughs> I just soon take a lick and is listening, waiting for him to make up his mind. Then when he did, he just said, I have a humidor over here. He says, why don't you put your cigarettes in there? I said, no, no, no. Oh, you see, you, uh, did you go up every year to uh, cherry picking? No, just that one time she, when she took us. Okay. Did you ever make any trips on the, uh, on the trains at the time? Uh, not very much. Mostly drove all the time, where we went. When uh, you finished uh, school then, when, Tell me uh, about when you finished school and after 1932. that. 1932. Where did you finish that school? At, at Appleton Senior High School. Then what did you do? Then I went up by my sister in St. Louis, and that's where I spent most of my... Which sister was that? Bernice. I always say I had a brother that was younger than I was, really good looking. Patrick, I don't know if you remember him. Pat. And my sister, older than I, was good looking. And I said, and he didn't even give me good-looking legs. <laughs> well, he didn't. Your sister was living in uh, St. Louis? Mm-hmm. Bernice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was really, really pretty gr uh, woman. She was, and when she talked to me, if I didn't listen, she'd go, <laughs> and when I went to St. Louis, <laughs> I went over there to get the linens and bring them up to our room. And uh, this woman, I forgot the pillowcases, I guess. And she said, dearie, dearie, come on down. You forgot your pillowcases. I grabbed them pillowcases and I run upstairs. And I said, B, you know what? She called me dearie. She said, oh, that's the way they do in the South. They didn't know your name, so they just called you dearie. Well, then I realized that the North isn't. Uh, so, uh, would you say loving or so, uh, well, uh, anyway, I just couldn't get over that. Did you go to work in St. Louis then? Mm-hmm. What did you do there? I became a practical nurse. We did. And then I ended up uh, working in the operating room. And I had my daughter over there. And I married, and I married a, a Filipino, and he graduated from St. Louis University, and uh, and he was 38, and I was 23 when I, 20 when I married him. Then I had my daughter at 23, and I had asked him how come he chose me when he there was a lot of other ones he could have had, and uh, he said, well, he said when I heard that you were Indian. He said, I wanted to be the first one to, to have his child uh, uh, from a first native. And uh, did, did you have any children then? I had one. One child? Mm -hmm. And uh, what's your child's name? Her name was Margarita. And Cariaga. Oh. And she's gone now. Oh. She died in a fire in Chicago. Oh, gee. So you became a nurse in uh, St. Louis then. How long did you stay in St. Louis? Did you move back to Oneida after then that? Then I, I came back to Milwaukee. I got homesick after I had my son at 40. <laughs> so a long space off of that. <laughs> I did. I just become homesick for the weather out here because St. Louis is really warm, really hot like in the summer. And, and everybody was treating me so nice and my sister said, I'll take care of Victor until you'd make up your mind to. So I was down here nearly a month when, <laughs> and there everybody was saying, oh, come on over here, come on over there. And then when I decided I was going to stay, well, then they all left. This was in Milwaukee. Uh-huh. When did you, uh, did you go to work down in Milwaukee, or mm -hmm. then did you move back to Oneida 
Uh, well, then I was in Milwaukee when I married Andy, Andy Cornelius. I see. And he wanted to retire. And I didn't want to retire yet because I still, I had a, almost a year left to stay in the Lutheran Hospital. And he said, no, I want you over here. So, so then I did. And I don't know, I forgot to tell you about my dad. My dad was made chief when, oh, that's right, yeah. when, uh, when I was six, in the sixth grade about. And uh, when my dad, the band used to come out from Appleton and uh, play over at the Seymour Fair, and they used to come out and play at the De Pere Fair. So when he'd come to there, uh, Minnie Kellogg lived in, in uh, Seymour. And she'd come over there to the fair and tell my dad she'd like to see him. And my mother always said, you go along. And I went along. I don't know if anything <laughs> ever went on or what was going or what anyway. And uh, so then uh, Ida Baird, the clan, uh, clan mother, May, uh, uh, voted for my, have my father put in there. And uh, I think Nori Demra is the one that has uh, that picture. When she first came here, and Nancy Webster was uh, head of the multipurpose, and I was over there. And uh, she said, Evelyn, do you know her? And I didn't know her. She introduced me, and she said she was going to be a historian. So she showed me the picture. And it was of all the, tr the chiefs that were made. And my dad is at the very end. So I don't know where she is with that picture. I haven't asked her. Do you know the names of uh, any of the other ones that were um, uh, chiefs at the time? Mm, I can't remember right off. And how old were you at that time, six years old? No, I was in the sixth grade. Oh, sixth grade, OK. Does that make you about 10? About that. 10 or 11. All right. And when they, she put it on the bulletin board up there, I felt, I don't know why I felt that way, but I felt ashamed. Why, I don't know. Did your dad ever tell you about the structure of the government and, and uh, how things worked out here at the time? No, he didn't. Um, he used to come over quite a bit to that one that lived down this, Road by the past the multipurpose. His name was Fat or something like that. Willie Fat. Yeah, they used to go over there, and and then a lot of times they went over into that uh, Grafton King's father in Nina Menasha, and they'd go to meetings over there. Did uh, he ever tell you any stories about Minnie Kellogg? No, he never did. But you, I you used to go him. to go with him when they had meetings. Sometimes you'd have it those little little tribes. And uh, Mr. Kellogg, was a great big guy, and he'd always sit up there. Mr. Kellogg. What did he? What did he do? Was he a banker? Or, or what was? Well, I know profession? she went to school at Grafton, Grafton College, and. Uh, they, she adopted a son, uh, Bob Kellogg, and he went to the same high school. I was just leaving there when he entered in the sophomore year, because they run sophomore, junior, and senior. And uh, she, and sometimes when he'd come up on Fridays to pick him up to take him home, because he stayed over there in Appleton, uh, he had somebody, Indian men, that drove the car. So I don't know who it was either. When you returned to uh, uh, Oneida, what, did you uh, go back to work? Oh, yes. I never quit. And what well, I was surprised when I come back because at the time when I left, there wasn't any anything of Oneida, you know, no religious thing or any our culture wasn't around or nothing. And then when I used to take care of patients in uh, St. Louis there, they were mostly uh, Jewish. And, and Jewish people seemed to be the one with the money to pay private duties. And uh, 
when their holidays came around, I mean, they were, they, you know, indulged themselves so much in their religion, and they'd have pots and pans that they only use for that day. If it isn't only for a day, they still use the pots and pans and the dishes for the uh, dairy and the dishes for the meats, and don't get them mixed up. And I just thought it was so, you know, that to, you know, think about it so much. And I thought they had such a beautiful, and the synagogue would send a, a candles in, and you light them only in the evening on the ones that have passed away. And, uh, and here, when I come back over here now, since I've been over here, it, it seems all our culture is starting to come back and all the things you know, that we had and I never knew. And it, it makes, I just can't believe it that there's so many nice things in, a, in the tradition. What are you working on now? Uh, I'm with the foster grandparents. Tell us about that program. Oh, that's for all the elderlies past uh, 55 and 65, and uh, it comes through the, from Luck to Flambeau, through there. And uh, for a while, that Cynthia LeCount used to try to bring it in over here, and nobody would take it, take it. So next time she came down to talk to us again, people here, well, Sonny King took it in, and he gave it to the environment to bring us in. So they go a lot of places and do a lot of things. So we were going to a lot of meetings, us elderly people that, uh, that uh, uh, had joined it then. We don't get much, it's just a little stifling, but I guess we just want to be out and around. Well, that's all I wanted to do, is be out and around. And uh, we get lost in that school over there, though. At the tribal school? The tribal school. Pretty big, huh? It is. A lot of walking. Oh. When you get kind of old, you can't quite get around there, <laughs> around them corners. Do you participate in uh, uh, any other programs within the tribe or in the community? Yeah, I was just voted in for the ARCA board. Oh. I was surprised because uh, they had said, if you want to advertise, you know, that you're on the board to be voted on and everything. And I said, well, to be is to be. So I just waited and, and my son couldn't get over that that many voted for me. And I was surprised myself. <laughs> but I'm glad to be back in the groove again. I used to kind of go quite a bit before. So you're not slowing down, you're speeding up. Well, I'm shifted in second. <laughs> Is there any, um, any events that you would want to tell us about in your life? Any experiences that you've had uh, that you might want to share with us? Well, I know when I was in, in St. Louis there, every time I would be uh, taking care of anybody in the hospital. They, at that time, they didn't seem to have very many Indians around there because they, he said, what nationality are you? And I'd say, well, I'll let you guess. So they, he would say, well, he said, I can't guess. So when i tell him, they couldn't get over it. So I guess there wasn't many Indians around over there. And then I, when his wife would come to visit, well, I'd go down the end of the hall and be down there while she's busy. So I turned around and here she was telling me to, uh, to come on back. So I went over there and she said, I heard that you were Indian. And I said, yes. And she was just so elated like over it. And I thought everybody knew what we <laughs> knew about Indians and everything. When you were with the group that went to uh, Germany, weren't you? No. I was the one that had that bad dream. Oh, that's right, that's right. <laughs> I had a bad dream and I, I just didn't want to go. He 
You want to tell us about it? No. Okay. Okay. Um, what does it mean to you when uh, when you say I'm a member of the United Nation? Does it have any special meaning to you? Well, I hear so much talk and everything already, and uh, it's just like um, we are a nation, but the uh, people, the outside people, don't want to admit it that we are. When they they came came here, we were just like going over to Germany or going over to England, but they don't want to admit it. And I always feel, well, I went through all that before when I was in school because I was the only Indian girl there. Indian squaw, Indian squaw. My mother had to run up there, I don't know how many times. What advice would you give to the, the future kids that are coming up if you were able to address them? Well, I always think, uh, I don't know, I think back over to the Jewish and everything, and they always try to be a marrying in their own, uh, their own people. Very seldom do you find them not. And when you do, well, you wonder about it, you know, that they, and uh, I know my dad used to say that they were, uh, the Indians are going to become extinct because we're intermarrying. And now it's almost right at that, a that time and age and everything that we are. And Do you think there's going to be a great deal of change within the next uh, 10 or 20 years here in the community, or do you think it'll pretty much stay the way it is right now? Well, mine change in turn of events and, and uh, start thinking about their, their ancestry and turn. And again, mine, they might just do the opposite. If you could change anything, is there anything uh, uh, that you could go back and change that you would? Well, I think uh, that it was a long time ago with my mother and dad, that they just really, what do you want to call it, just put it, uh, whitewash their minds so much that, that they thought that was the way to go. So they thought they'd get ahead and that's why they took the rest of us from uh, out and went to, you know, and moved into town. Mm -hmm. But she never told me that or never said anything like that. But I imagine, I always figured that maybe that was the way she went. Mm -hmm. Then again, too, maybe it could have been the convenience for your dad because all the traveling he was doing, you know, with the... Uh, he, a long the time ago, they used to have those places called Chautauqua. They were large tents. Some people never heard of it. We used to go to, and, uh, well, we always had to go because my dad belonged to those things. and. Uh, that's when I first saw a lady uh, use a bow, and, uh, a violin bow on a, on a those uh, saws. Oh, okay. I in the Chautauqua. And then, uh, then I began to see them, and then they have speakers up there, and I liked it. I enjoyed it. Is there anything that I might have forgot or, uh, or that you'd like to, to share with us? I know the story about your dad was, uh, I, I find that really interesting uh, when he became a chief. Well, it seems like very many of them didn't know about it. I, when it was many Kellogg that had them made at that time. And uh, well, I always think, look at my dad and when I look at my dad, because there was a, we used to be invited out over here, Mrs. Ben Doxterdy, and uh, she, she always would make that bread, Indian bread. 
whole bunch of them. And we'd be over there, and uh, Miss, my dad would go out to the barn with Mr. Ben, and Mrs. Ben would say, that Alfred is so good looking. I'd look at my mother, and she'd just sitting there. <laughs> and when uh, Ella, and Ella, Ella Henderson, <laughs> She said, well, I could have had Alfred. She said, but I'm his cousin. And I'd look at my mother again, and she'd just sit and like she didn't hear nothing. <laughs> then I'd look at my dad, and I said, I think, is my dad that good looking? Well, when it's just your dad, you, you don't think, is he this way or is he that way? You just know him as your dad. Well, I'll tell you a joke then, since okay. I'm on here. Okay. When I was young, and I was learning to read, and I could read the paper finally, because my mother used to get the paper, and uh, it had on there, and it had writ had. Uh, this man was hurt on his honeymoon, and I read. It, I said, "Ma, where is his honeymoon?" So she never got through telling that story to anybody that came, and I never knew till later where his honeymoon was. Well, with that, I think we'll uh, call it quits. We'll call it quits. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to hear that second joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's about that, <laughs> Well, thank you.